I was just gonna talk about GDPR, which is not the uh, not the European law um, passed in 25th of May this year. Um, it's uh, I was referring to global diet plan rules. Um, the the general data protection regulation is uh, is about the. It's about the European law that uh, requires all the companies to store your um, your data safely um, and not to spam you and uh, all kinds of things regarding the security. Um, so uh, I have two cases. I um, I thought about uh, talking about two case study that we have delivered to the to our clients. Um, which one of them is very, very common, um, sort of we have seen in the field, um, the first one. And the second one, it was, um, the second one, it was uh, something we did, but it's not so common. Um, the, the first case, uh, which is, was about seep dialing, um, we've seen a lot of, uh, after um, Microsoft's, um, uh, Sky for Business, uh, you know, they integrated the uh, voice and video in there and everybody start uh, using it. Um, most of the IT companies, they, um, they try to integrate it to the existing video system or telephony system. And um, they use the, I should say, the easiest way, but at the same time, it, it creates a headache. Um, uh, headache for the users um, because as I'm just going to show you, you know, uh, what sort of um, what sort of headache they created for the uh, normal users to be able to ring and call the other people. Um, so we have we have uh, quite a few in the market: Skype, Cisco, uh, Polycom, Asterix, uh, all kinds of different companies popping up every now and then, and uh, they have uh, mostly. Um, follow the SIP standard, uh, but Microsoft decided to modify the SIP um, and create a little bit of headache there. Um, so if you if you just go for the easy way, that sort of business card you get, like um, you get all kinds of uh, all kinds of addresses. If you're trying to reach me, you know they create the they create the subdomain. Because that's the easiest way to um, to ring someone, create a search rule uh, on the server, and try to direct the call from one server to another. Um, having having this sort of sort of implementation um, for the normal user, for the endpoint user, which are not um, tech savvy or um, highly IT educated, um, really, really cumbersome and um, difficult to, to reach. We had um, this company we worked with, they had all kinds of equipment, very expensive one like Cisco, they have telephone, uh, you know, Asterix, and they have Skype installed, but the users, they didn't know how to, to call the other party. Honestly, they, they couldn't. They, I mean, who can remember like, uh, is he sitting on a Cisco device or is sitting on a Polycom device? Or what should I use? Um, and so they, they, uh, you know, they look for some kind of solution to to solve this problem, and that's where we came in and to try to address this. Um, this sort of this sort of solution is not scalable at all because even for the IT um, personnel, when you do one changes, then you have to go and do lot of changes in other servers. So it's, it's not just one place that you have to uh, change your dial plan, but you have to go several other places and then you have to document it and you have to educate the things. You see like, you know, uh, it, it's like a snowball. It starts small and then it piles up, piles up on the things uh, down the hill and uh, really, really get out of control basically. So what do you want to really see that you have a business card like this, one or two addresses, like you know your email, uh, IP phone, video, whatever you have, just 
one single address, call me or send me an email with that address and you know, my mobile is this or that. So how are we gonna, how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna get rid of all those junks and um, uh, unified everything to one single address? Um, so to, to, to address that, we have to go to very fundamental of communication between the endpoints. So if you have the, if you have the IP address of the, of the two entity, and they know which port they have to, um, to use, build into the application, then basically you can dial in the IP address and you know, bring the other device and, and call them. Uh, as I said, provided that uh, the, uh, the application aware of and listening to that port. Um, and this is like a, I'm showing that that's basically, it's in the internal in, in one subnet or VLAN. Um, this would be true also for internet addresses, if you have a public IP address, and provided that there wasn't any firewall or any netting or anything, and the, the call would go through as simple as that. You, uh, you, can, you can call the other IP, uh, and um, provided that application listen to that port, to the same port that you're dialing, you can reach them and, and talk to them. Um, but, now we have all this, all this um, um, application or uh, session layers that made life easier for us. Um, basically, SIP, H3 through 3, and um, you know, you name it. All the signaling, signaling, um, uh, signaling um, protocols. Uh, again, without any server in the middle, you directly you can build in uh, a phone book. You, you can address and map the IP address of the device that you're calling. Again, I'm showing it's, this is in the internal network, intranet. Um, and basically, you can, you can your, your application uh, server, uh, your application uh, on, the, on the device, which is in this case is SIP, uh, it would map the, map the address and the IP address and would reach the other, other end and you can make a communication. Again, going back to, to the public address, that would be true. This is manageable for like one or two or I don't know, five maybe, but if it gets 100, if it gets like, in this case, like thousands of users, that's not possible. Every single time you have to go to, a, to every single device, create this book and uh, phone book and update it and maintain it, that gets out of hand. So looking at the, looking at the stack, the OSI stack. Um, basically, we have the codec on the top and the session or the signaling, uh, which provide us all the negotiation and the ports and um, uh, communication between the two devices, the signaling. You, RTP, just forget about it for now, which is the media transporting. The IP is the roadmap between two devices. So having that road uh, from one device to another, you can use that. But to be, uh, to be more user friendly, we created that session layer that uh, signal and negotiate all those, um, all those codecs and all those capabilities built into the device, trying to negotiate with the other end and establishing connection. Um, I'm just showing you a very um, basic uh, characteristic of the SIP server. Uh, which is um, three built into one. Uh, you can't have it separately, but these days, like you know, every all these uh, Asterix, OpenSIP, and uh, other other servers from all the vendors, they have everything built into uh, one server. Um, you can you can register there. They maintain everything for you. Um, all the phone books, everything. You can redirect call. You can park call. You can do a lot of things from one server which is demonstrated in here. Like we transfer everything, like 100 or 1,000, whatever uh, phone book implemented in, in, in the device, transfer that to one location, which is very easy to manage. Uh, all we have to know is the address of the, uh, of the SIP server. And that's, that's quite easy to manage for thousands of the endpoints. So that was, that was for one single, that's for one single um, 
server. But what if we have two different domains? One domain like managed with, with one server and everything, all the locations, all the IP addresses known to, to that uh, SIP server. But if, uh, let's say, um, I haven't marked it there, but let's say, yeah, it's not on this slide, it was in the previous slide. Let's say one of these endpoints trying to call uh, somebody out of their domain to the other domain. What happens there? Then the SIP server on behalf of the, um, the device that's trying to call, make an inquiry to DNS and resolve the address, uh, the SIP the server resolve that, that uh, name to an IP address and direct a call to the, to the uh, to the neighboring SIP server and they establish a call. So the keyword in here is the DNS. Is the DNS is a, uh, is a key factor because it's resolved all the domains in here. You can have multiple domains and they, uh, they peacefully, uh, they can resolve their addresses, the IP addresses, the, uh, all the capabilities through that DNS uh, and establish a connection. So um, another point is mentioned in here. This this DNS can be can be can have internally built or publicly built, which we have it. You know, for at least for this customer, we have it uh, internally. We use the public DNS and we use uh, we create an entry for the devices internally uh, for all the SIP endpoints on the DNS internal DNS. Um, so again, uh, going back, since DNS was the, um, was the key factor in here, let's have a look at like, um, how does it work. Um, somebody on the IP, IP device pick up the phone and dial some number and provided that number is, uh, is mapped to an to a address. So you, you basically make a, a name authority pointer. You, you send that um, to DNS. DNS look up and find out, oh, there's an address associated with that number. Then do a second inquiry. It would do a second inquiry to find the domain name, uh, to find the um, SRV record for that domain name, whether there is a, there is a services on that server uh, can, can do SIP or HTTP H322 uh, or any other on the services uh, on that server. So basically, it would return the A record which is the IP address and the services that you can see. It lists all the services, all the all the servers that can do SIP in this case. Uh, can do SIP. So there are, it's a cluster of four in this case that they can they can do SIP, TCP, and and uh, uh, and UDP. So this is the the bottom one is like a record of uh, return record of. Um, um, record uh, return from DNS. So if we have a look at it closely, um, we can see like three, three servers, they have like priority 10 and one has 20 and one has weight of 60 and 220 and one zero. They all can handle C5060, port 5060 and the, the address, the domain name is given. This is the gateway zero, gateway two, three, four. Um, so, can anybody say like what is like priority 10 and weight 60? What does it mean when, when you get this sort of SRV record? What does the endpoint uh, responsibility in this case? How does it connect to, to for example, to that server? Yes, exactly. Um, so you can do load balancing. Ba basically, it's the, the lower priority you see there, the highest, um, the highest, um, what's the word for it? Um, the lowest number is the highest priority uh, for, the, for the device to connect to that server. So in that case, like we have 310, we have uh, three um, priority 10 and 120. So these three, um, it tells, DNS basically says the, the endpoint that you have to try first to connect to these three servers. 
If they are not available, then you can go to, to the next one to 20. But there is a weight for it. Um, there is a weight for number one, which is 60. So it says like, the, you have to load balance all the incoming calls, all the inquiries, or all the, all the calls that are coming to this server. 60% 60 60 of the time, it has to go to the first one, 20% to the second, and 20% to, um, to the third one and zero to, to, the, um, to the last one. So my question to you, when you have a weight of zero, what's the point of having that there? Because of failure from the other one. If the other ones are not responding, they will go to the least favorite one. Exactly, exactly. So if all of them fail, if all of them fail, then even the, the weight is zero, you get the next priority, which is 20. So then you fall back to, to the last one and uh, you establish a connection through that server. Um, so this is a diagram, very, very simplified diagram of what they had. So you have a product from Cisco, which is uh, um, some video devices. You have uh, Microsoft, a Skype client, um, and you got Asterix phones, um, a phones which is using Asterix uh, servers. Uh, Without DNS, as I said, like what it was, how it was implemented was like creating a subdomain for each, for each zone, for each zone. So you have like, um, I don't remember from the previous slide, but let's say uh, it was like video.example.com for for video zone. Uh, Skype for uh, skype.example.com for that zone and like say asterisk.example.com for that phone. And all of them, they're using a device in the middle. Um, that's, that's a, you need a, uh, some kind of um, interoperability uh, device. In this case, they've, they've been using also Cisco um, to translate um, uh, signaling and media transformation from, from Skype back and forth to the other, other devices. Um, with the DNS, basically what they did, you had, they, they created all these um, search rules on each end. So uh, let's say I wanna call from, from the video IP phone to Asterix phone. What I do, I create a search rule in here and it says like um, one, two, three, four, at asterisk.example.com uh, should be routed this way and skype.example.com should be routed through that zone. Um, you know, as I, as I mentioned, it's just, this is not practical. It's like when you do some changes, uh, when you add devices, when you do some changes, you have to go and change everything everywhere. And uh, it's, it's costly. It's a nightmare, basically, working with this sort of system. But uh, with the DNS, basically, you can directly inquire to, to the DNS. And uh, from that SRV record, you find what ser services uh, were, um, which, server, um, which server are uh, able to, uh, to handle that sort of or that type of call. Um, how do we do that? Like, you know, going, going to the, this is the actual diagram. Um, again, a little bit simplified, but that's what they had. Like, you know, a cluster of uh, Skype, a cluster of um, video servers, a cluster of um, Active Directory, a cluster of Asterix servers, uh, and all load balanced. Um, and as I mentioned, it's, it's uh, taken out, I have taken out a lot of component for Again, GDPR, so it's, it's not um, the privacy of the customer is not violated. Um, this is the this is the response you get when you do that sort of inquiry to the DNS. Um, you get uh, you get uh, SIPs.tcp, SIP TCP, and if you look at it, these are for the for the standard SIP devices, uh, the top one, and it's pointing to the to the uh, to the server, um, to, the, to, to the actual address of server with the port, num port number. The first two is like TLS and TCP, and that's uh, H3, H323, 
and uh, discovery. And the next two is the A address of those servers. So you know how to reach them. And those, the top four ones or five ones, excuse me, the top five ones, it shows you what services is running on those servers. The bottom one is the XMPP, so it's like a WebRTC and stuff. Um, but the, the last one you can see, this is a, I've taken out the, again, the IP addresses and stuff. But um, the link uh, SRV record, it comes, and it's totally different from, from a standard SIP, as you can see. And when, when, the, when the SIP, uh, when, the, when the link or sky for business when they receive those, uh, they discard the, the first part because they say, I, I don't understand what the, what, what the heck is this. But uh, they look at what they're looking for in that record. And based on that, uh, look at the, uh, they would look at the A record and what services run on that A record, the IP addresses, and forward the call. That's for internal. Inter this is implemented in internal. And there's the, the mistake .com. It's not really .com. It's .local or whatever the actual thing was. Uh, when I was writing it, I didn't notice that. Um, but this is, this is on the external things, uh, built on the external things. Pretty much the same, it's just the domain name is, is changed and the IP addresses of the uh, server sitting on the edge of the network listening to, 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 um, to the incoming um, communications. So knowing that, it's, um, you can, I'm not sure how many of you working with Skype. Have you, do you have Skype implemented? So do you have this sort of problem in your, I've seen a lot of this problem, like you know, they created subdomain and routing and it's a very, very common, field, common problem in, in the field that we, we're trying to correct. I mean, it's, it's working, but nobody can call. Like when I, when I look at the statistic, before they implementing that, uh, integrating everything together, they had, the call rate was increasing because they know at least I can call you and you can call me, this is my address. But when they implemented all these different servers and services, then they didn't know really how to, to, to reach the other person. I know for a fact that they send email and it says like, come to this conference room, uh, call me in that conference room and I call into that conference room so we can talk. So they didn't know how directly they can reach each other. Um, and obviously like, you know, when you do, do this sort of arrangement, ad hoc sort of call, um, other people, other people does the same thing and they don't know, they are not aware that you are using that conference room. So they call in and they get interrupted and all kinds of conflict comes up. The, the second case is less common, but um, we had, we had a uh, enterprise size sort of uh, company. They had, they had main offices in North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia and there were almost 3,000 employees. Um, the, the IP system works fine, like, you know, the call routing within the IP works fine. It's, they have no issue in there, but they, they make some, some PSTN call or uh, 4G calls. And what they wanted is to avoid long distance calls. So if I'm an, if I'm an, if I, I am, if I am in Orlando and I'm trying to reach somebody in Australia, I don't want to, you know, pick up my IP phone and make a long distance call from New York or wherever the, the PSDN gateway is to reach Australia. I want uh, that call routed through our IP network, land into the gateway, implemented somewhere close by in Australia and make at least local call or somewhere close by. So reduce my long distance call. Um, they wanted, of course, to maintain the whole high quality, not so much delay that, uh, you know, become unusable. Um, the, um, I just mentioned an egress point of, uh, from the PSTN network. Uh, also, the last one is, is also the uh, major thing that we have to fix that because they didn't want to buy like 3,000 lines from the carrier and, uh, you know, uh, face that sort of cost, uh, which is sitting most of the, there, most of the time idle there is, you're just paying for it. Um, so 
to do a very, very um, uh, basic calculation, they already have three T1s, two, T1, two, two T1, E1 uh, in Europe and 2E1 in Asia, one in Australia. So they wanted to maintain that, not to add to it, preferably to, to go down, but um, to, to keep it, it was okay. Um, there was, uh, uh, they want to uh, reduce their, their PSN calls to reduce that. Um, so if they wanted to go the full scale, like buying lines for every single employee. I just did a simple calculation. Um, 60, 60 basically channel uh, times three, uh, and one in Australia, 30. So that would be like um, 100, 210 sort of lines uh, you have to order from carrier, which is, it costs a lot, it's plus the maintenance. That's just renting it and you, you basically pay for every minute that you use it. Um, the last one become, uh, you know, the last one that when you, call, uh, when, when you don't have all those lines, then you have to share the lines. So if you have, if you have like 60, if you have, um, uh, if you don't have 3,000 lines, then you, for example, in this case, you have 210, but um, I, I, I'm drilled down into it in a, in a sec. So in one region, if you have, three T1s, so three times 24 is um, 72 lines. So you have to, 72 lines, you have to share it between 1,000, if I remember, if I call it correctly, 1,000 employees in that region. They have to somehow share that uh, channels uh, periodically without sharing or overflow. And uh, they have to, when they call out, they have to demonstrate to the receiving, uh, receiving uh, or recipient of the call that this number is valid, call me back, and we, when they call back, they reach that person. Um, the other option was SIP trunking. They, they didn't want to go down this way because they have to make multiple contracts with multiple carriers. There wasn't one carrier that can deliver like uh, all the services around the world. Um, what they, uh, what they wanted was six-digit numbering, internal IP, and 13-digit, or more or less, like calling out to reach out to the PSDN, uh, PSDN board. Um, what we did, like, you know, for uh, um, what we have done before, we used the real-time asterisk uh, and OpenSIP distributing call between asterisk clusters and pulling out all those information from the database. Uh, it was easy and managed for for the IT personnel, so we we thought of that that would be a that would be an option for this scenario. Um, the other thing, the new thing we have to think about and implemented was dynamic number allocation. Uh, as I said, like you have um, certain number of certain number of uh, co channels, but you have a lot of users, and uh, not necessarily all of them. They need to call out like 3,000. They're not going to concurrently call out, but uh, we have to somehow indicate to the recipient of the call that this number is associated with that person. I was just going to see like how we how we did that for them. Um, so again, back to doing a, you know a simple calculation. How would uh, cost 1,000 person per location? 30 channel would be, we need 30, 33 E1, um, e, E1 uh, trunk or uh, 31 times 30, that would be uh, about uh, 900, uh, 900 something. Uh, uh, 900 lines, which is, you know, is expensive, this sort of, this sort of calculation when you do it, it's, the, the company tried to avoid that. Um, we, we have to somehow, as I said, map those numbers outgoing with the incoming ones so they, they can match. Um, and it's not, uh, it's not scalable. It's the, basically the, the, every time you know, an employee leaves, like let's say a uh, department closes or the, you know, they, they scale up, they employ a lot of employees, then they have to go back to the carrier, just add our lines or 
take away some lines from is, is not basically practical. Um, the al alternative we thought of, as I said, is like uh, creating a pool which dynamically uh, take out numbers from the pool and pull back when the, uh, put back uh, the number into the pool when the conversation is over. But somehow we have to map the egress and ingress calls. Um, so this is like a simple, very simplified diagram of like, you know, uh, their location, um, North America, basically, and they have a number of servers there. Um, with a with a gateway in, implemented in four location, they had, um, they wanted to do this cost routing. That wasn't that wasn't a big issue, you know. We've done that before, so um, that could could have been uh, that have been easily addressed. Um, so. But the, the, the new thing that we did, it was this uh, number plan. Um, and as I said, like they wanted six, six digit number for internal. So we, we just came up with some kind of uh, scheme for them. It's uh, not like you know, rocket science. It's, it's very easy to make up your own one. Um, we, we thought of like uh, calling 09. Um, and uh, I think it was 11 digits or something to make up for um, 11, uh, 09 to, uh, to address that this call is a PSTN call. Uh, we strip it and then dial the rest of the number, um, the PSTN, we send it to the gateway and they call it. And so what we created, we created all these um, tables, like all the neighboring countries uh, around this gateway for the least cost routing. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm like calling from US, like calling to, I think it's Cuba 52, um, I'm calling that, or Mexico, uh, calling Mexico. So there is some intelligence built in there that it would recognize this number is a one, then the neighboring or adjacent country is 52. It has to, the call has to go out of this PSTN in US not send it to, to Asia or to Australia to, um, for the sake of just, just making the call. So uh, based on like, you know, the, what they have, like 60, 60 lines or uh, to E1, 60 channel, we allocated 20 uh, static numbers uh, for, the, for the conference rooms. So the external parties, they can call into the things, to the conference room. And that's, that's mapped to the conference room. They, there, is no, there is no alternative there. If there is no channel left, they cannot reach the conference room. They have to buy. There is no other option. They have to buy more lines. Um, but the, the bottom part is the pool. Um, so let's say somebody from, uh, from seven something called to a number, um, let's say Cuba. They call that number, um, well, I have a better diagram. I can show it to you in the next slide. But I just want to show you that um, we, keep t we create a table with, with some ID, um, index it with 40, uh, you table on the, on the database. And we um, record the caller ID. We, um, we created the IP address of the gateway, the numbers we, we, we have um, we have been given from the carrier, um, we use that to indicate to the recipient party that this call coming from that, that gateway. We record the call the ID and we timestamp it. Um, so how did it work? Like say that number, the IP number, the phone picked up and you dial 09, which is indicated like it is a PSDN call and 3144, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's a Netherlands, uh, uh, country code, it would send through the European, which is um, UK, they had UK gateway, so it goes through there, and then, uh, no, sorry, this is uh, not wrong, wrong number, 45 is uh, Denmark, but anyway, um, it's going through that number, it shows that this number is indicated to the callee, um, the, the last one, sorry, the last entry is 99, which is the current caller, uh, is calling that 
3144 uh, And what is shown to that callee is that the n pool number. Uh, that, that number is routable back to the endpoint. So um, we, we just gonna, I'm just going to talk about like, this is calling out to the endpoint. We record that information. We pull out the log file from the asterisk. We run a script uh, to parse that log. And then the enter is the information we need. It, we enter it into the database. So if the caller, if the caller missed or want to call back, for some reason, within that time frame, this, this, this is a rotating log in the database. So because we have 40, 40 things, um, we have 40 lines, we cannot keep that log forever. You know, maybe someone else calling and using the same number and when the endpoint, when the external entity call that number, it ends up to, like say, Jack call, um, I don't know, Mr. X, and Mr. X, after two days, decided to call back the same number he had on his phone. But that number is being used several times. So if he calls back, instead of going to Mr. Jack, it would go to Jill. So, and it would be a conflict of interest. So what we do, we override, we rotate the log, we override the, the previous entries. Um, when he calls back, if the entry, if the, if the information <coughs> Uh, information uh, regarding that number is in the database, we will forward the call. If it's not there, if the, the, the number is not there, if we, 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 we uh, forward the call to the help desk. Um, so basically we created a dynamic um, sort of pool, override the previous numbers. Uh, we, sometimes it ends up like person call like three, four days the same number, but it ends up you know, to the wrong person. But that's the price you pay. We had a solution. It worked fine. Sometimes it, it's because the person decided to call so, so late, it would end up to the wrong person. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is the solution we offered them, and it worked fine. So these are the two case study, studies I had. I don't know I'm over time or not. Um, if there is any question, I can answer. Um, the endpoint doesn't, doesn't notice it, it's just the servers. If there is a load, a lot of load on the server, then we have to go and review the, um, the SRV uh, entries, like, you know. But, but they, they do use the records. Of, absolutely, they use the records. They, when, I mean, the end, end Central, yeah, absolutely, they all use the DNS record. Uh, it's, it's simple as, like, SIP, because SIP is, uh, see, uh, follow the web standard, like you know, browsers. You, you type in a uh, you type in a name there, but actually, what you, what you're doing, you send the inquiry to DNS, and DNS resolve it to IP. Exactly with, with this scenario, when you call like Jack at example.com, you actually you're looking for the IP address, and that's sent to the DNS and contact with a port number, which whether it's SIP or H3. It's three to three or you know whatever the service is. Well, no, it's just that historically the problem with SRV is that it's not consistently implemented at least in our pool. It's just that a lot of organizations are on barrels of these rates and so forth in a consistent manner by all platforms and all handful vendors and all software. Right. Everywhere. Um, but it's sufficiently universal for your app. Right. Um, we, we, uh, that was just an example, but what we used, um, actually we always allocated the same priority. Uh, we try to load balance it round robin through all the servers we have. So same priority, same weight. If one server goes out, then you know, the, the call doesn't go through that, that server. But the, it has been, we have never, I, f I cannot recall ever I had problem with at least Cisco that we work with video systems. With Asterix, I haven't seen it. I, I'm not sure of Polycom. I haven't worked that much. I've worked some, but not much with Polycom yet. Any other questions? 
So that's it from me. Thank you.